What's up guys, my name is Hans Wouters and today we're making a video about the question that I get asked the most every single day in my DMs and it is, what longboard should I buy? Now this is a hard question for me to answer to each and every one of you because it really depends on what type of longboarding you need and what you prefer. So today I'm gonna give you my tips as much as I can so that you can make a good decision on what longboard you should buy. I already made a video about this a long time ago. It feels like that was like 10 years ago or something. But people are like, yeah, just tell me what to buy. I don't wanna promote any brands. I wanna be in the Independent here. I want to give you the best tips that you deserve and that's not brand specific but it's board specific if that makes any sense. I just want to give you tips so that you can buy a board that fits you well and the brand it doesn't really matter that much uh, if you know what to look for. First of all you gotta know that there are lots and lots of types of longboarding. There's downhill, there's sliding, there's free riding, there's dancing, there's freestyling, there's street skating, there, there's so many styles of longboarding and yeah I'm focusing this video on people who want to buy a dancer, a freestyle board, uh, maybe like a cruising board and basically just a beginner board because most people are going to be watching this video just want to tip on what first board they want to buy or like the first like more more professional boards that you want to buy. So without further ado let's just get started with the shape of the board. Stay moist. So yeah, like I said, there are many types of longboarding. So naturally there are a lot of shapes of longboards. So there are like fucking countless kind, kinds of shapes. I wanna tell you what I prefer and why I prefer it. So maybe you find like, oh yeah, I agree with Hans. So I wanna buy the same type of board. And maybe you're like, nah, I don't agree on that. That's not really me. So I wanna be, do the other option. So first of all, uh, in the shape, there's an effect if your board is symmetrical or not. I think for me, uh, my preference goes to symmetrical boards. I think it's just convenient that you can take your board and you can just go skate and you don't have to mind where your kicktail and where your nose is. This goes both for if you do tricks, if you do dancing, if you do, if you just cruise around, it doesn't really matter. I think in all of those categories, like having a symmetrical board has an advantage. And for just cruising around, I think it's just convenient. Uh, here, there is like a, it's like an exception. If you have a cruiser, cruisers often have like a asymmetric shape where they do have a kick tail but they don't have a nose. I think that might be convenient because it's easier to carry and it's lighter but yeah I just opt for a double kick tail like popsicle skateboard cruiser because it's even better if you have a nose because those are easier to oddy. But yeah if you just have a cruiser and you just go around campus or just want to go to the to the fucking bakery and get some donuts uh, then it really doesn't matter so. And then maybe one of the most important parts of the shape is the kicktails that your board has. This part is what enables you to pop your tricks. Like most of your tricks, you're gonna use this part of the board to pop it. Who's disturbing me? Shut the fuck up. Don't talk about school right now. It's fucking 10.30. So <laughs> kicktails are the part that makes you pop your tricks. If you don't have a kicktail, don't mind it. Uh, you can still do tricks, but if you wanna buy a new board and you, sh you know that you wanna do tricks, look out for a board that has a kicktail because it will just make life easier for you. Also keep in mind how the kicktail will wear off as you use your board. For example, a pintail has like a very pointy end and these are nice for cruising, but if you really want to do tricks, then this pointy end just doesn't have as much wood there as like a traditional freestyle board. So so as you do tricks, you will wear off the tail much easier because you're just shredding off the wood. Next up fam, there is the size of your boards. This is probably the most important part of your longboard buying journey. What size should I buy? That's also the most asked question within the questions of what board should I buy. There's like different layers to it, you know, it's like a good lasagna. Uh, and the top layer, the cheese on it, that's like the size of the board. <laughs> Cause yeah, the size is so different. Like in skateboarding, it's easy. You just get like little variation. But if you want to get a longboard or a cruiser, you're basically starting from like a fucking penny board, going all the way to like more than my arms can spread. All these motherfuckers in between they're so specific so the basic the, the fundamental longboard I think you should consider is a 40 inch that's one meter longboard you should start wondering like should I buy this board 40 inches is perfect in my opinion if you are like you want to get a board to cruise around the campus and you don't mind taking
taking like a one meter board. If you want to cruise around and you want a shorter board, maybe you need to take it with you on public transport, you need to take the subway first, or you just want a shorter board because you want to pop it up the curbs, for example, as you're cruising, then a cruiser might be better for you on the smaller sides of the spectrum because cruisers typically are more maneuverable. Yeah, if you don't mind, get a one meter board, it's 40 inches. If you're satisfied with this, then it's already good to go. On the longer side of the spectrum, it is more complicated because now typically we're talking about boards for fun, for recreation. If longboarding for you isn't really about transporting A to B, but it's also additionally about just enjoying yourself as a sport maybe more, then this spectrum opens up. Of course, if you want smaller boards to have fun with, that's also fine. But most people will fall into the spectrum of one meter plus because these boards will give you more flow. Uh, if you want to start doing doing some dancing steps, learn some dancing on longboards, then these ones are the way to go. The longer, the more flow you will get. The wheelbase of a longer board is just longer. That's fucking mind-blowing, but it's true. It will make the curves that you make longer, and this will really translate to a more flowy, more surfy, chill feeling as you skate. That's the reason that I always skated the boards of one meter, 20 centimeters. Pretty big boards, like the ones up there on the wall if that's really important for you if you are very dancing or flowy feeling oriented then consider like a 118 115 120 centimeter board because those are, are perfect for that then from 120 to 1 meter there's also that 20 centimeters is a lot yeah that's a really important region in the freestyle and dancing i think like 95 percent of the freestyle or dancing community falls in between those limits so it's like a two six Sigma variation. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. So let's talk about it. I'm gonna cut the bullshit in this video and just give me my opinion. In my opinion it really comes down to if you are more freestyle oriented or if you are more dancing oriented. If you are more freestyle oriented get a shorter board. Go like one meter to 110 or something. If you are more dancing oriented go to from like 110 to 125 in that range plus minus five. I don't really care. Of course there are a lot of exceptions to this rule uh, but I'm pretty sure like 90% of people will be satisfied within this and to make sure that those other 10% aren't unsatisfied you want to make sure that before you buy the board you try the board so that you are sure that you will enjoy this feeling and then last but definitely not least there is price of the board <sighs> I already told you that the most asked question was the size of the board but I was fucking lying man actually uh, price is the most asked question probably this is the dessert after the lasagna. This is what everyone is looking for in this video. What price should I get my longboard? Poof. Yeah, this is a hard one. It's tough, man. It really depends on all the previous factors that we talked about. But I'm gonna give you some tips. First tip, don't get a board under 100 euros. A lot of people ask me like, hey, what longboard should I buy under 100 euros? Keep in mind, you have to buy a board, you have to buy wheels, you have to buy trucks, you have to buy bearings. So I'm gonna give you some typical price, price ranges for each of those. So not getting a board of under 100 euros is because all of those things just cost money and if you get a board under 100 euros those will be cheap but and this is a big ass but it's like a fucking kim kardashian but there are exceptions if you are starting and you just want to feel whether this isn't something for you then i would actually recommend like getting a cheap ass board if you are gonna buy it and then skate it for like two weeks and then just leave it in your fucking garage until you suddenly watch a video of a fucking hans Walters and you're like oh yeah i want to i want to do that and you try it again for like two weeks and you put it back in the garage you, you don't want a board of like 500 euros sitting in your garage well you could have used that 500 euros to buy some pop high stay fly clothing you know <laughs> No, I'm kidding, uh, you, you, you can spend that money on, on some way better experiences than just having fucking boards in your garage. So many people do that. Something better to do would be to find someone who has an old board that you can borrow. Say like, hey, I, I just wanna find out if this is something for me. Can I borrow a board for two weeks? And yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will be down for that. So that's a better way for you to save even more money. And then another huge tip is to get secondhand longboard shit. Like I said, 
so many people get a longboard and then just don't use it anymore. So that means there are so fucking many secondhand longboards. So if you are keeping a budget in mind, look in the secondhand market. This is probably the biggest tip I could give. If you get a secondhand board, you will get like twice the board for, for the same money. It's insane. Uh, another huge tip is to look for parts uh, separately. Like I said, you want a longboard, you want wheels, you want trucks and you want bearings. The longboard, the wheels and the trucks are very easy to find secondhand. Take a look at the parts separately because that might enable you to get a better setup. Uh, and if you want to know what shit you can buy, just look at forums online. Just type in R longboarding in Reddit. There are so many questions there about what longboard to buy. This video is just futile. It's useless compared to the information there. So that's why I want to incorporate my opinion so that I can, I can add value onto that from my experience of like of like eight years of longboarding perhaps. A note on that, it might be scary to buy separate parts because you might not exactly know how to combine them or whatever. If you need help to set it up, you can look it up online or you can just go to a skate shop or just find someone who can do it for you. It's really easy. So a lot of people will, yeah, will be down to help you. Uh, considering the fact that everyone is on a budget, I'm also going to talk about some prices for, for people who want to do it as a hobby. Uh, and you already know that you want to keep longboarding. Uh, first of all, the easy parts. Uh, bearings and you just want to go for bearings from like 15 to 25 euros in my opinion it's better to get like 20 euro bearings and just replace them instead of like super expensive bearings because bearings fucking get ruined by longboarding it, i don't fucking care if you have ceramic bearings and you're claiming that they last super long it's just a fact bearings are not made to <laughs> to get into a longboard and to be harassed the way that we do it and ceramic bearings are the same but yeah in my opinion 15 to 25 euros and just don't skate in the rain and it'll fucking be fine next to the bearings next up the wheels uh the wheels you want to look for uh and it, this really depends on where you live here in belgium i would say look for wheels in between 30 and 65 euros there are cheap wheels there are more expensive wheels and most of the time uh, you get what you pay for so yeah and it really depends on your level and how seriously you want to take this and that will pretty much determine where you fall in the wheel category for trucks i would recommend something in between 35 on the low side onto like 75 euros in that range of like 60 70 there are very fine trucks and those are pretty much perfect in my opinion for dancing and freestyling um, but then there are also cheaper trucks and those will do you well too as you are more into the beginning of longboarding a big tip uh, if you want to improve the way your trucks feel is to improve your bushings those are the the polymer parts of the trucks like the plasticky the rubbery things uh, those ones are super cheap but they have a big impact on the way uh, your truck will handle so yeah that's for trucks for the board this is very hard i would say if you are a very beginner start from like a board that's 100 euros for the board only and then as you move towards using it more and more until like using it as me as really a passion as a hobby as a sport as something that you just love you can go up to like 350 400 euros so as you can see boards can get very expensive and of course you might be drawn to that because it sounds fucking awesome but those boards will still shred you don't want to focus too much on that make sure that you have a board that suits your needs if you're starting you're typically learning a lot of tricks and you don't want to have to keep your board perfect if you're starting you just want a board that's pretty cheap that you can just shred you can just try tricks and don't care about it a big tip here and that's going to be our last tip this is the bonus bonus tip is to get a good setup like good trucks and get some good bushings in there and then get some good wheels get those two checked good trucks good wheels and then just get a cheaper board and kind of like make your investment in the trucks and wheels and then the board can be cheaper because the boards it will shred if you're learning tricks it will shred no doubt about it but trucks and wheels as you're starting they don't really shred as much so if you invest in that then you can just get a cheaper board go through that 
process of shredding it and then just get a new board with the money that you saved you'll already be progressed over time that's a really big tip and something that a lot of experienced riders recommend to beginners and something that i also recommend because i believe that that's an ideal way to go about it so fam that's it for this video i really hope this has been valuable for you guys if so drop a like drop a subscription on the channel you want to stay motivated you want to stay stoked on longboarding check that subscribe button down below and i really hope that this helps you get the first longboard to get your ne next longboard or just entertain you somehow i don't fucking know yeah i hope this helps you other than that check out the merch merch is still online it's not gonna be online forever so pop high stay fly clothing link in the description inktail.com slash hans go check it out i really appreciate all the support everyone that's been buying shit or that's just been supporting it i also appreciate you watching this video until the end you're the homie so i will see you guys in the next video ciao uh if you don't have a big kit